After college, I started Fortis as a prepaid taxi cab card for college students. So uh, this was in 2000 and the uh, prepaid meal cards or prepaid phone cards, uh, especially for young people were all the rage. And I thought, well, there ought to be a prepaid, prepaid transportation card because the kids don't have any money. You've got to sell to the parents when they move their kids into school. And it was going reasonably well. And then 9-11 happened and mm -hmm. the bottom fell out. Uh, parents weren't traveling to see their kids for parents' weekends. I made a deal with the local cab company in Atlanta to sell their corporate accounts, the ones that they invoice on my, my, on my taxi cab card. And one of them wanted chauffeured cars instead of taxi cabs. And one referral led to another, and that was the first uh, private aviation company that we got. And so that was really the genesis of Fortis was started because we failed into it and had to pivot. I think it's good to have a network of support of people that you can lean on and talk to. Uh, it's funny, we're talking now on Sunday night, I had dinner with my dad and I was reminding him, I said, dad, you know, there was this one point in the fall of 2001 where I just called you at work and I said, I don't know if this is going to work out and I don't, I don't know if this is what I should be doing. And you just said to me, you raised money, you told people that this is what you're doing, so go do it. And, and, you know, I mean, you weren't rude about it, but like, it was very direct. And, and I just kind of got off the phone and I said, he's right. I did raise money. I said, I would do this. So I've got to go do it. And, uh, you know, something about hearing just somebody else put that into words motivated me and helped get me out of my own headspace of, of maybe thinking, thinking dire thoughts I shouldn't be thinking. But if I didn't have people, uh, that, you know, I could, I could, that could hold me accountable and challenge me, uh, that would have been a lot tougher. I think you have to be relentlessly skeptical about your own efforts and always willing to learn about there's a better way to do it. You can take this from something over there and incorporate it into what you're doing uh, and refine, refine, refine. You can never really stop that. So as soon as you start to believe accolades or you know to think that you've attained a level of service uh, that puts you above the competition, I think that's actually maybe other than quitting or thinking about quitting, you know, the most dangerous point is uh, that you begin to get uh, less relentless in that pursuit. So I think it's really important to have a visual image that tells the story of what we're facing and just continue to cite that visual image. So the communication I think was very important. So our image was that we had a world-class sailboat, America's Cup caliber, and the wind died, you know, and it didn't mean the boat was any worse. It didn't mean the crew was bad or lacking. It's the one thing we can't control. We can't control the wind. Uh, I can't ultimately control if a state or country is going to lock down. And ultimately, I can't make a billionaire fire up his jet. You know, he's, he's got to want to do that. Um, but then downstream from that, there's a lot of things that we can do for him. And so that metaphor, I think, just kind of helped us align because a super uh, basic point I've learned is that if you don't capture the narrative, uh, the narrative is crafted for you and it never cuts in your favor. Ultimately, knowing your purpose of why you work. And, you know, in our company, we have a vision statement on our wall and uh, it says, that we are creating a legendary level of service for secure private travel. And then we have five display cases underneath that of tangible reminders of what that actually is. So uh, it, might, it might probably to the 20 year old me, that would seem cheesy, uh, but you know, to the 43 year old me, I, I need that. And it's in our lobby and every day I go out, I see that and it reminds me, this is why we do what we do. And this is examples of that. And I think you have to really know it can't be money. It can't be fame. It can't be beating your competitor. Those things will all just kind of fade away at a certain point and not have any meaning to you. And then I think too, I think I, it's always good to have a bias towards action. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in routines and it just helps to take the focus off yourself to have a routine that you can hang your hat on. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe. And to stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram.
at Action Catalyst Podcast and on Twitter at Catalyst underscore Action. And thanks for listening.